I want to thank you for being brave enough to do this because I know this is hard for you. Um, but we are grateful uh, that you're here and you told me that you want to help other people and so you're willing to do this. And so I just want to tell you, you were in the video and you talked about that you were kind of in a bad situation when you called Brevard Rescue Mission. Can you tell us just a little bit more about that? Um, yes, my son's um, father, my hus ex-husband now, um, had some serious addiction problems still to this day. Um, and it had declined to the point of the night I left him that he told me he was going to get really drunk, drink a lot of vodka, and beat me with an inch of my life. And I said, okay, it's time to go, you know. Um, I took my opportunity of window and I left and didn't know where we were going to go. A lot of my family thought that I was doing the same thing that my ex-husband was doing. Um, so <laughs> went to a friend's house for a couple nights and then my Dad took us in, and they were having trouble at the time, so it wasn't a good place for us either. So I called a friend of mine, and she said, you know, I know you don't want to hear this, but I think you need to go to a shelter. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and she said, I know, but you need to call. And so I called the information line, um, the 211, and they said, there's this program for single moms with one to three children. And it's a Christian program, and you know they will give you a place to stay and help you find a job. And I had been a stay-at-home mom for three years, two years, sorry. So I said, okay. I had some college, you know. Um, I had an insurance license before, but I hadn't been in the workforce in a while. So I said, okay, that sounds good. I'm going to call them. And they were interviewing that week, and I, within a couple months, we were there. And the night before we went there, we were hiding in a spare bedroom with issues going on. <laughs> so I just wanted my son in a healthy environment. That's what I wanted. That's great. Thank you so much. So when you came, can you kind of remember back to that first day and just kind of, because you were so afraid of it being a shelter. And then, like, do you remember the staff people that you kind of interacted with that first day or what it was like when you arrived? Um, yes, <laughs> a little scary, but very comforting. Um, just, I knew we were going to be okay, and um, just felt welcomed and loved, not by myself, that, you know, I was going to have help to get through this. I remember when you arrived, you were very cautious. I don't know if it was from being in a domestic violence kind of situation or having that background, but I... Even with us, it seems like you had a trust issue. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Or do you remember? And then because it changed pretty quickly. Oh, yes. I've changed <laughs> a lot. Yeah. In fact, when I got my job now, um, I took this job, and it's a small agency, and I work with 10 women. And the scariest thing for me was working with 10 women. <laughs> because I have had been through so much in my life, and I just had real serious issues with trust. And so it's, I've definitely changed a lot in that area. So tell us now, so your son is five? Yes, he started kindergarten this year. Mm, precious, and you're, you've got your own place. So tell us a little bit about your current situation. So you're, you have your own apartment? Yes, I have my own apartment, um, have a good job, and raising my son in a healthy place. And I don't have to rely on someone that may or may not be stable. And I drive home some days and think, I'm just so thankful that, you know, I'm healthy and I can choose who's in my life. And if I don't find someone that's healthy, then I can do this by myself. I can do it with a little bit of help from family, of course. But What would you say to uh, the, the residents that have just moved in? You know, you were a lot more stable than some of our other residents. So as you were there, you saw a wide range people that had grown up homeless and all kinds of situations where you kind of went from stability to instability. Um, tell us just more about um, somebody brand new coming in. If you were in that staff and they were there that first day, what kind of encouragement would you give them? Just that they're not alone, you know, that they're going to be loved there and they're not alone and there's a community to help them. It takes a village to raise a child. It really does. And that was one thing that was so comforting is I couldn't be there for my son. I had to go find a job. I had to figure this out. And 
knowing that he was being taken care of and being loved on by so many people in such an unstable time in our lives was just amazing. That's great. Anything else you want to say? You've done a great job, <laughs> Jessica. You've been so amazing. I really, you were so nervous you weren't going to be able to say anything, but I just really want to commend you for, for what you've done here to, to be willing to stand up and tell your story because you've been through a lot of rough, a rough situation and you are doing amazing. And, you know, on the street, if you all saw Jessica on the street and saw her in her office, you'd never have any idea <laughs> that she's been through what she's been through. And now she's anxious to turn around and help others. And so I'm just incredibly proud of you and thank grateful. You. Well, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Um, it's an honor to be able to come and speak and just see some of the faces that have touched our lives. And um, you'll never know what it's meant to us. Beautiful. Thank you. That's why we do what we do.